Hello and welcome to the weekly wonders of the Chris Evans Brecky Best Hits. We catch up with Dermot O'Leary throughout the show as he grooves through his 24-hour comic relief dance challenge. Caroline Flack is dropping in after helping Dermot with some smooth moves. Joining in the fun is fab film star Rafe Spall chatting about his new movie X Plus Y. James Nesbitt, that's me, I'll tell you all about hosting the Jamison Empire Awards. And the incredible Kaiser Chiefs provide the mesmerising music. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show. Goodbye, grey sky, hello blue. There's nothing can hold me when I hold you. Until 7 o'clock this evening, you can also make a random donation of whatever you like, whatever you can, if you can. And it will make you feel good. There'll be that glow inside you didn't know you had. 03457 910 910 is the number to call for that. And I've been told by research that the Radio 2 audience prefer um, to actually nominate their own amount of donations. So there you go, that's the number for you. All right, shall we welcome to the show James Nesbitt? I think we ought to. Good morning, James. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Uh, very well. Thanks so much for joining in there. Pleasure. Before Pleasure. we had a chance to, to, uh, to hug, to shake hands, to catch up on old times and Indeed. what... What more water has gone under the bridge since we last met? <laughs> Plenty. So you're talking about the Empire Movie Awards, so you're not talking about acting, you're talking no. about hosting awards. Now, you're quite good at this. Well, um, I do it from time to time. Well, They always come to me when everyone else says no, I think. But, um, no, I did it last year, and it's a really good night at the Jamison Empire Awards. You know it's called Jamison? You're not allowed to say Jamison. You have to pronounce it Jamison. How come? I don't know. That's what they told us last year. We had Michael Flatley in last week, who is a very a huge fan of, of John Jameson. I didn't know that Mr. Jameson's name was John. Oh, no, they are. No, I don't know, but, but they, now, they pronounce it Jameson. Anyway, the awards are on the 29th, and what's different about them is that they are voted for by the public. So you have the usual contenders, like the, you had at the Oscars and the BAFTAs with the Imitation Game, which has got most of our awards, with Benedict Cumberbatch and... Here in Knightley, you've got Theory of Everything, but also you then get people like Andy Serkis up for Best Actor for uh, Planet of the Apes, which is great. Um, you get Guardians of the Galaxy, all that. So there's a big, broad spectrum of all the movie public loving awards. Now, last night, uh, we just chanced upon this. I don't know why. Um, I bought the DVDs last week at Camden Market. I bought Quadrophenia, oh, yeah. which I haven't seen for ages, and I bought Train Spotting. We watched it last night, and I immediately put it into my top five favourite Brit right. flicks of all time with a bullet. And I had to get rid of something uh, to get it in there. I actually got rid of Dan Buster's momentarily. Ah. Um, could you give us a, a sense of your top five Brit flicks? Would oh. Train Spotting be up there? Maybe. Is, is, um, is, is Lawrence of Arabia British? Yes, it is. It's the number one uh, British film of all time. All right. uh, that's in there, of course. Uh, Room at the Top. Room at the Top. No, that's not in for me, but that would be in for you, would it? Long, yeah. Is Long... this definitive or are you thinking I'm just out loud? Thinking. Long Good Friday. Long Good Friday, yes, that's okay. Okay, this is a good top three already. Um, uh, kind yes. Hearts and Cornets. Yeah, very nice, classic. Cass, very good. OK, uh, Mother, Mother's Day as well, lovely film right. for Mother's Day. Saturday night and Sunday morning. Yeah, this is good now, this is good. Now yeah. you're way over five. All right, OK. So <laughs> this really is a pub conversation. Uh, Jimmy, uh, sorry, <laughs> that's Jimmy. Ricky, yeah. what about your pop, top five? Think out loud about you. you. You've already said Quadrophenia, right? Yeah, but it's not in my top five, but you'd put it in yours, would you? Just because what it did when I was growing up. Yeah, right. yeah, I, I, I want it to be what Jimmy. Else? Jimmy. Not Jimmy Nesbitt, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> I want it to be you too. Yeah. What else? I can't do it. It's too, it's too big a question. It is, Chris. isn't it? It's like, what's your favourite record? It depends what mood you're in, doesn't it, no, I exactly. suppose? Oh, yeah. And you, but, but, Ga- wait, is Gandhi British? Um, I suppose, yes, it is, isn't it, really? Yeah, The Cruel Sea. Yeah, I mean, you could say yeah, yeah. Star Wars is technically British, but yeah. it's full of Americans and it's shot in outer space, so yeah. I th- it doesn't say Britain to me. No, exactly. Not, not currently, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the Empire, uh, you know, Empire magazine and now what Empire does online, uh, screams movies to me. It's just, they've just got it right. There's nobody I, I meet who doesn't like the Empire family. No, it's fantastic. I mean, and I think why, why everyone turns up at, at Empire and why uh, is because, you know, it's a very good publication for the studios. And for me, it's like a free advert, really, for all the films. So last year... As, we... is, as is this, for Empire. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah, and Jamison's. Um, smooth. <laughs> um, uh, but they had... Uh, they, uh, last year they had... Because they, all, they, all the categories are voted for by the public, like Best Newcomer, Sci-Fi, Horror, Comedy... You're so on message for this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then they have Have three... you bought Empire magazine or uh, something? No, that's why, one of the other reasons I'm doing it is because they give me a free copy. Oh, uh, yeah. Not a subscription, just a copy. <laughs> um, but uh, they have a legend, icon and hero ad. So last year you had... 
Schwarzenegger was there, Tom Cruise was there, uh, Hugh Jack. Yeah, they turned up. turned up. Yeah, so I mean, I think that uh, gives an indication of just how important the Empire is. I mean, you know. The gravitas uh, of the uh, Yeah, so, um, no, it's great. And people can vote online up until the 23rd of March, I think. So they can um, vote all the way through St. Patrick's Day, can't they? Yeah, indeed, absolutely. Because <laughs> <right. laughs> it's a great St. Patrick's Day conversation indeed, to have. It is, perfect, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, also, the, but the British films have done brilliantly this year. I mean, and I think in the top. In the, in the actors, I think it's four British uh, actors. I think Richard Armitage, Andy Serkis, Benedict, and uh, Eddie. Uh, so it's um, and Eddie. then you've got one of the great future, well, not one of the future stars, one of the great British films actors coming in now, uh, and a bit Rafe Ray Spall. Spall. Yeah. yeah, he's going to come in. Uh, can you give me a steer of what to ask him? Because I don't, re- I've never met Ray Spall. How's his dad? Yeah, I know. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he must be sick of that. Uh, Pretty no, sick of that, I would he's, imagine. He's. Uh, you can ask him. I met him when he was quite young, because I worked with his dad years ago, and he's, um, he's, he's turned out lovely. Like Let's not mention his dad anymore. No, 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 OK, exactly. two mentions there, all right. So hosting awards, I mean, you, obviously you, you love your acting, you're very good at it. And I've seen you host awards. I saw you host the GQ awards. You're very good at that too. Um, do you get more ner- I, sp- I would imagine you probably do get more nervous before hosting than acting. Yeah. No, very much. I mean, I don't know. I sort of, I don't know why I end up doing it because it's not as if they're paying me a huge amount. Um, but uh, I suppose I, uh, I do get very nervous. I do a song, you see, sometimes. You did. As you, you, know. ca- you came on singing a yeah. song, didn't you? So I might do that again this year. I, you know, it's fun. It makes me feel as if I'm involved in the British film industry if I host these awards. <laughs> That's good. That's one way, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. You know, self delusion. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatsoever, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, just rubbing shoulders with Tom and Arnie and Hugh. I mean, you know. Who's confirmed to turn up this year? Well, I am so far. Um, <laughs> Ricky, uh, Ricky, the guys' <laughs> chief, you're willing to turn. You do uh, usually have a band playing, don't you, in the corner somewhere? No, Who have you got here? No. Who have you got? No, I've got the backing. I've got a backing track. Uh, I think it was a toss up between having a big band there or uh, a copy of Empire in the magazine. They've gone for that. We're actually um, cheaper than a backing track. All right, well, you'd be uh, more than welcome. But um, I, th- I know Andy Circus is coming with script. All right, okay. And of course, if you start the whole thing by singing, because you wander on singing, don't you? You mm. literally wander through the crowd. That's what you do. That's yeah, your thing. That's sort of what I do at tube stations as well. I just sort of wander <laughs> around and singing. And do you get more money at the tube stations or at the Empire yes, Awards? Okay. Lot, yeah. uh, but you hit the ground running, don't you? That's the thing. You're already started. Well, you? you hope. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, your hope for right. But also, because they're not televised, not, these are the one awards where they let themselves go a wee bit more. They're not under scrutiny. There isn't that sense of real. I mean, it's the end of the awards season. They've gone through all that bitter kind of pretending that's not competitive and hateful. It's the and party, the real party. This is the one, because they all sit there around the tables and, thanks to our sponsors, have a good old time. Well, James, it's great to have you here with us this morning. And I think we're going live to Caroline Flack after this downstairs, who's dancing away with Dermot O'Leary, who's now been at it, busting the dad dancing for 13 hours and 60 minutes on the night. James Bay, hold back the river on Radio 2, 19 minutes past eight. So all our guests assembling this morning for your Friday breakfast show. All right, but first of all, we must go back down to the man of the day. And now on BBC Radio 2, it's Dermot's Day of Dance. Text the word Dermot to 7005 if you want to give a five for Dermot, who's now been dancing for exactly 13 hours. 90 minutes and 46 seconds. Dermot, come in! Christoph! <laughs> Thank you, man. Listen, no, I so want nice. to... You know what? It's so nice to hear your voice because <laughs> I've been... Honestly, from about 2 o'clock this morning, I've been thinking, when's Chris coming in? When's Chris coming in? OK, well, <laughs> I'm happy to come down and um, give it a bit of granddad dancing now for me, not just dad dancing. But <laughs> um, uh, tell us, we, we, what hurts most when you... We know what hurts most when you go on a marathon or a half marathon yeah. or a triathlon. What hurts most when you've been dancing for 13 hours? The knees hurt. And for the, for the most part, it's just like it's sleep deprivation because I got up at about seven at this time yesterday. So I've, even though I've been dancing for 30, 13 hours, I've been sort of up 24. And, um, and when I first sort of thought I'd, I'd do this, it was a party last, last year. And I've been up for a fair while, but I've been up for about five or six hours. And it was three in the morning, and I thought, well, I can do, I'm sure I can do 24 hours. And it was, the, honestly, it's the most stupid decision of my <laughs> life because it's, it's so difficult. I can't tell you, but it's been look. It's been great. The support's been terrific. The red button's been brilliant. Um, the Radio Two family's been t- unbelievable in their support. Uh, Radio One have just popped down as well to you know uh, you know as a sister station. So it's been just it's just been great. And thank you so much to everyone that's donated so far. Have you had any out of body experiences? Yeah, there's been a couple where where halfway through the night we were doing a dance number. And my mind was telling me to do... And it wasn't exactly complicated. None of these dance numbers are complicated. And uh, my mind was telling me to do one thing. I was looking down at my legs and they were doing something different, totally different. I was looking at them going, 
No, no, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just kick out there. What are you doing? <laughs> and uh, and they, just, they wouldn't. They just wouldn't listen to me. Um, and there's been a couple of like grasping for phantom water bottles that I thought were there and aren't there. Uh, but the work. I mean, the two to five was just awful. I mean, it really was. Everyone said Joe Wiley said it was going to be terrible, but because um, she did obviously the, the treadmill thing last year, she said that, that those hours are dreadful. I had no comprehension as to how bad they were going to be. Okay, what are you going to do when you finish at seven o'clock? Do you know, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm, I'm, we go down to the Palladium, uh, where Comic Relief launches, and then I, I just hope, you know, I hope I make it that far. I know that sounds ridiculous, and that's not meaning to be melodramatic. I just really hope that, you know, it's eight o'clock in the morning now, or eight twenty-two. So I just hope that I've got enough stamina to sort of see me through. All right, well, if you finish at 7 o'clock and you fancy a night out, I know the name of some great clubs you could go to. This is fantastic. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ricky's up for Did a night I, out, aren't you, Ricky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great sports. Here we go now. We'll take him out for a night out. Oh. We'll say congratulations to him. Awesome. Uh, Dermot, well done. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Christoph. Uh, OK, so we now have 13 hours and 22 minutes of uh, Dermot dancing there for Comet Relief. We have another superstar guest in the studio. Let's welcome Rafe Spore. Good morning, Rafe. Hello, good morning. Thanks Hello. for having me. Me. Uh, very well. You're very welcome. Delighted to be here. Right now, you uh, technically are Caroline Flack because she's late. Oh, that's I've always wanted to be <laughs> Caroline Flack, and I've always felt like her on the inside as well. So, Have you? Yeah, yeah. Are you aware of Caroline Flack? Have you come I across? Certainly her? am, of course. Yeah, I'm a fan of her. I don't think we've great. ever met before, have we? No, we never have, Chris. Okay, but you, you you're aware of James Nesbitt to your left hand side. I am aware of James. Have you worked Nesbitt? together? No, no, but James has worked with my father. Yeah, I met you when you were quite young. Yes, in you the, did. In the Palmerston, in the Lord Lord Palmerston in pub on Lordship Lane, Lord I remember Lord. it. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. It's tell us about that meeting. Well, it's a brilliant uh, restaurant, Lordship Lane, called the Palmerston, owned yes. by Jimmy Younger. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And we had lunch yeah. there because your dad used to go there all the time. You and your yes, mom. that's right. And you had just started, were you at drama school? Or, or no, I, you didn't? No, I think you, I just, just not started got into acting. drama school. And you just start, you were just starting yeah. acting. Yeah. And I was like being all sort of like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's tough, it'll be hard for you. And there he is now. I'm hosting the Empire Awards and he's probably in most of the films. No, not at all. No, you were very nice. You were very nice. Now, Rafe, you love your acting, of course you do. And, love a um, bit of acting. Uh, you, you, are the, you are the son of um, Timothy, who has yes. just starred as Turner, of course. Yes, he And has. via this, he's picked up this skill. He's, he's discovered his own skill for painting. Have you ever uh, sort of uh, experienced something or had to do something for a role in a film that you've then taken into real life? Have you? I just... The, the, <laughs> that leads beautifully into the film I'm here to promote. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I'm doing a film about mathematics at the moment. I'm yes. playing a, 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 a maths teacher. So there's a bit in the film where I have to write out a sort of big goodwill hunting type um, formula on the board. Um, but you just sort of parrot learn it. It's not like I know what it means. It was a thing <laughs> called Euler's Totient. I don't know who Euler was and I don't know what his <laughs> Totient means, but I can... I can write it out on a board. Well done. <laughs> yeah. and so is that your party piece now? Yeah, probably. Could you do that? For, could you write that out on a piece of paper for no, us? No, no, I, I literally couldn't. I've forgotten, so it's not my party. All oh, right, piece, so, so a, it was for a it's while. It's a very good story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the movie—it's it was a brilliant story. Yeah. Thank you, and you it's love your an acting. Excellent maths-based story. <laughs> okay, so the film's X plus Y. Yeah. Go on, sell it to us. Go on, off you go. It's a film about maths. There you go. Is it? So, <laughs> no, but come on. To you. Um, so uh, there was a documentary made about ten years ago called Beautiful Young Minds yes. about the International Maths Olympiad, which mm -hmm. is where lots of young people from around the world compete in maths. On paper, that doesn't sound very compelling, but it made a really good, engaging documentary, which the director of which has decided to make a feature film out of. So it's about a boy who's on the autistic spectrum, who's got this amazing talent for maths, um, and he's got a, a mother who's unable to relate to him properly, played by Sally Hawkins, the wonderful, incomparable Sally Hawkins, and I play a sort of washed-up maths teacher um, who... Uh, um, um, drinks too much and does other naughty things and has multiple sclerosis and who's fallen out of love with life. But when he meets this young boy who's brilliant at maths, he rediscovers his love for maths and life wow. and Sally Hawkins. That's a meaty wow. role, isn't wow. it, James? Yeah, was that, was that a play? You did uh, a play of it, did you? No, no? I, did, I did a play with Sally Hawkins, ah, well, um, right. the, of which the director came and saw and thought it might be a good ah, idea to put us okay. in a film. Right. So this was inspired by true events, as they say nowadays. The actual film was inspired by true events, yes. Yeah, because these say based on a true story, but now they say inspired by true yeah. events. What's that about? Come on, Mr Film. How well, come I just, they think, I just think they weren't based on true events. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and we all found out because of the internet, <laughs> basically. All right, brilliant. Ray Spall's here. James Nesbitt's here. Kaiser Chiefs are here. We're still waiting for Caroline. This is your friend David Williams, and it's my job to tell you you're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Can I go now? Martha 
Reeves and Havan Dallas dancing in the street, dancing for Comet Relief. Dermot O'Leary outside New Broadcasting House. You can watch him permanently throughout on the BBC's Red Button. Lynn's been down there to see him, haven't you, Lynn? Oh, he's wonderful. He's I may have fallen in love with him. And he's actually doing some choreographed stuff at the moment. He's not just swaying uh, back and forth like uh, most of us would and do often after a night out <laughs> or during. Right, top five Brit flicks just because uh, James is here and he's talking about the Empire Movie Awards and we were talking about it at home last night. Rafe is the latest taxi off the rank. Uh, what do you have for us, Rafe? I've got then? it. I've just finished, actually. So I've got number one, Nil by Mouth, directed by Gary Oldman. All right. Yeah, um, awesome. That might be my favourite film of all time, period, actually. And then Secrets and Lies, no, I starring a young no. Timothy Spall. Yeah. Um, uh, Are you sec- related to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, oh, yeah. Okay. I may as well do Bloody Sunday. He's so my brother. Me. He's my brother. Yeah. Yeah. That film was filmed in my friend Barry's front room. Uh, excuse me. Was this it? Is was a, it really? Yeah. This isn't working as a bit of radio. This is now just a pub conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to chair so, this. Please don't talk over each other. Sorry. Back to Rafe so Number three, Sexy Beast. Oh, very good. Everyone loves Sexy Beast. Mm. Then a little little one that some people might not know called Poor Cow. <gasps> oh, Brilliant yeah. film. One of my favourites. Do you like that one? Never heard of Never it. Never heard of it. I think it was Ken Loach's first film. Hmm. Yeah, with a young Terence Stamp. Number five, performance. OK, and what oh. you've done there is you've put them in order. You don't have to do that, because that's, that's heaping more pressure on yourself, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> uh, James, you seem to have come up with yours. Yeah, Long Good Friday, Room at the Top, Kind Hearts and Coronets, oh. Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, This is England. Excellent. All right. Fantastic. Lynn, would you like to chance yours? Uh, the only, I can top one. I can't think of them all. Come on, I've been running around. Give us um, a top one. J- kind Hearts and Coronets. It's Are you completely going? fantastic. The performance is amazing. Ricky well, Wilson, well, Kaiser Chiefs, hovering on behalf of the whole of the Kaiser Chiefs. Clockwork Orange. Yes. With Nell and I. OK, oh, yeah, yeah, very yeah, good. of course. Quadrophenia. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Jurassic Park 2, The Lost World. <laughs> 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 Porridge, the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What about Hear My Song? Anybody seen Hear My Song? Oh, Hear My Song! It's a good, good film. Great. One of the best sight gags ever. Mm. The Cow and the Well. The Cow and the Well. Yeah. Take that, you great big gaping hole. Let's That's leave it right. there. Hello, I'm C6 Steve, and you're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Right now, let's have some live music from Kaiser Chiefs. Ricky, what do you have for us first? Oh, OK, we're going to play an old one called I Predict a Riot. Excellent. I predict a riot. Not if there's anybody left in here. I don't want to be out there. I predict a riot. I predict a riot. I predict a riot. I predict a riot. Yeah. 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 the Chiefs. A uh, new single, Falling Awake, is out now. Also with us this morning, Rafe Spall. New film, X Plus Y, is out in cinemas today. James Nesbitt here too. James is hosting the Empire Awards 2015 on Sunday, the 29th of March. And I think she's hot to trot into the studio now. Caroline Flack is here. Good morning, Caroline. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Welcome to the show, James. Hello. Here, Hello, James Caroline. Nesbitt. Caroline Flack. Hello. Ricky Hello. Wilson, the whole of rock and roll behind him. Caroline Flack. Hello. Rafe hi. Spall, Caroline Flack. Hello. Please sit down, Caroline. Well done, by the way. We were all watching you. You're very oh, good. You, you can that still really hi- weird. You can still high kick it with the best of them, can't you? <laughs> that will a... always be there, I think. So you've been downstairs. Up. You've been dancing with Dermot. How is he holding up? He's he's he looks like he's going a tiny bit delirious. <laughs> you know when you get so tired because he's been up since seven yesterday. So it's going to be longer than twenty four hours. Uh, but he's good. Do you know what made me laugh most is that we had like an hour rehearsal to do that, and it was the morning after the Brits, so we weren't feeling great. And he didn't have it, and he filmed it on his camera so he could learn it at home. And he just got that spot on. So he must have been at home learning that routine on his own by that camera. So After 13 and a half hours of dancing. Yes, he did delirious. very well. <laughs> so you are the current reigning champion of Strictly Come Dancing. This is, yeah. we are, this is your reign. We're joining you during your reign. You're it's like the amazing. queen. It's so weird, because last time I was here, it was the day before the final. I know. And, and I was very nervous. We knew you were going to win, and you did win. It was a great final. Um, amazing. What did you do after the show that night? Um, we, there was a big production party for everybody, and then I went to a, a house party of someone I didn't know with my glitter ball. She's always good, isn't till it? <laughs> eight in the morning, till the sun. I mean, till eight in the morning, That's and then left wrong. both my bags there and everything. I had to go back the next day, knock on the door. I didn't know the guy. I went, uh, excuse me. I think I left my passport. At your house. house party. <laughs> I haven't been to a house party for ages. Me, James. No. Yeah. No. Rafe's so, last house party you went to. Well, it, it's my birthday celebrations tonight, so I'm having a few Ooh. people over at my birthday? house. Well, my birthday was on Tuesday. 
But now, like, the actual celebration will be tonight. Oh, nice. I see. So I've got a party of eight. Uh, <laughs> so I've got a well, party of give out the address, over. we could get more there. <laughs> but it's only a mess, isn't it? Yeah. So this has... So you went to... The, whereabouts in London was the house party? It was in West London. West And it was, a, like, a friend of a friend of a friend's wow. house party. So what time did you get there? About four. So you got there at 4 a.m.? Yeah. Wow. Now, was it a spontaneous house party or was it already going on? It was, no, it was already going on. It was already a party, but we then sort of came in and... Way! Because, you know, you can get to that situation, can't you? Especially around the BBC, especially uh, nowadays, mm-hmm. in this Clarkson-esque era that yeah. we are Look existing out. in. Easy. Um, you, you, you get to the point where you go, hang on a minute, we've got to leave here now. And then somebody goes, all back to mine. So it wasn't an all back to mine. It wasn't an all back to mine, no. All right, OK. It might have been earlier on. Were they really chuffed to have the winner of Strictly Time? <laughs> I bet they were. Of course they were, yeah. No on one the, really on the knew who I was, to be fair. Wow. You, 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 can can only, this you can only do an all back to mine on the last night of a job on location. Then it doesn't matter. And then you can bring everyone back. <laughs> and, then and then production had yeah. to deal with it. Yeah, Are you an all true. back to mine guy, James? I was when I did The Missing. Uh, that great comedy show about my childhood. <laughs> uh, we celebrated by having all back to mine in Brussels. And, uh, it's not I, all back to yours, doesn't qualify. I got straight out of that country pretty quick the next day. Do you, have a, you don't have a house in Brussels, this is a hotel. No, no, it was an apartment. It actually. doesn't matter, it's still not all back to yours, is it? Do you have a, are you a genuinely all back to mine person? No, I, I am an all back to mine. I'm desperately all back to mine, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Please don't leave. <laughs> Come back to mine and stay there. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Carolyn, you got there at 4 a.m. What time did you end up leaving this house party? When, but when it was light. So about 7 or 8. No, hang on a minute, it was in the middle of winter. That would be about 10 o'clock, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was definitely light. <laughs> and you still forgot stuff and had to go back? The next day, because I lost my passport when I was going away. <laughs> all you ever do, by the way, on Twitter, mm-hmm. all you ever do, because I follow you on Twitter, all you ever do is apologise for being late, which you were again this morning, <laughs> and, so, and talk about injury and jet lag. That's, that, they're your three main Twitter themes, aren't they? It's my life theme, most okay, of the time. So what, what injuries are we talking about, mostly, and what, how come you're always jet lagged? Um, I'm always jet lagged because I like going away a lot. OK, where'd you go? How come? Um, back and forth to LA quite a lot. Nice. Because um, my best friend lives over there. We Excellent. miss each other a lot, so we kind of live in each other's houses back and forth. All right. Um, and I'm always injuring myself because I'm just a bit clumsy. OK, and you went on the Strictly tour, didn't you? I As, did, yeah. How was that? It was really weird. It was completely different to the actual show because the show's it's so real and emotional and you're really in it, whereas the tour is the same show every night going round, like a... Like a musical, more more like that. So, so the pressure's that, off. The pressure's off. So there's no nerves anymore. There's no nerves anymore. And can no. you play with it as well? You have fun with it. A little bit, but it's quite scripted. Is it? Kind of. To, to the dance is quite scripted. Scripted it's come dancing. Where, scripted come All right, dancing. Okay. Excellent. We'll have a bit about <laughs> Morris and Michael Bublé. We'll have a bit of Kaiser Chiefs. More from James about movies. More from Rafe about his movie. And whatever the heck else anybody wants to talk about, we really don't mind. <laughs> it's Friday morning. Happy Friday. Cheers, Browns. When you're tired of what you got. So, um, Ricky, where are you at the moment? How long have you been together now, Kaiser Chiefs? Oh, as friends or as a Kaiser Chiefs? Both. Ten years almost to the week since our first record came out. Right. That's flown by, hasn't it? Happy anniversary. And then uh, we were working out earlier. I think I've known Whitey for nearly 18 years. Really? That's half a lifetime. Okay, away. and is this the original lineup? Are you as you were? Um, original lineup, kinda. Me and Whitey have always been together. We're, the, we're, we're, what, what are we? What are we? Um, Founding members, yeah. and then Peanut. Peanut, he used to play guitar, but we didn't, he couldn't play it well enough, so we gave him a keyboard. <laughs> Simon, uh, yeah, he joined later as well because uh, he was at University of York, so we had to wait for him. Who's to most that. on probation still? Uh, this one, VJ. Hi, VJ. Hi, how you doing? I think I think you're good. Thanks, thanks, man. Okay, I think you're good. Where did you find VJ? Don't talk about. Don't talk to VJ. Don't talk about VJ. <laughs> don't talk to VJ. <laughs> okay, how long have you got to be in the Kaiser Chiefs before you can take part in an interview? Oh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. I've been waiting 18 years. Though. VJ, VJ, uh, get, get hold of that microphone. Take it off, Ricky, OK? Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk to you, VJ. Hi. Um, what's your no, favourite... N- neither am I. <laughs> what's your favourite colour? Uh, blue. OK. Uh, what do you think of Ricky on The Voice? Um, pretty attractive, really. OK. <laughs> Tell us the truth. Um, what do the rest of the band feel about Ricky being on The Voice all the time? <laughs> Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, um, oh, good. Poor VJ. It's good. VJ <laughs> really, oh, he really is worried for his job. <laughs> Take the microphone back off, VJ. Sorry, VJ. VJ actually does have his first proper interview today. What, with the Kaiser Chiefs? Uh, for, the, for the Kaiser Chiefs, with okay. Nihal. For, no, um, not going well so far. Sorry, VJ, yeah. get entirely my fault. Have you brought references from other bands? Uh, actually, can I just say, we used to, the, his old band used to support us. 
Okay, and? They were very cross when we stole them. You stole him? My goodness yeah. me, how did you go about that? Because, you just, you know, we needed a drummer. And we're a lot more successful. Right. <laughs> what are you going to do? Send the earring, have you? Um, so, let's get on to the voice. Uh, what do you miss about Kylie Minogue? What do I miss about her? Yes. Um, she always um, uh, made sure that I was acting professional when I wasn't. Okay, you got on very well with her, didn't yeah. you? There were times when, because I didn't realise that when cameras are on you, you can't ever lose concentration. And I used to go into, like, often into the daydream world, and she'd come over and snap her fingers in front of me. Really? Back in the room, Rick. Ms Minogue snapped her fingers at yeah. you. And um, do you keep in touch? When was the last time you talked to Kylie? Uh, this morning. No. I said, uh, morning, darling. <laughs> <laughs> coffee, <laughs> coffee, please. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and uh, but what about Rita Ora? Uh, she wasn't there this morning. OK. <laughs> I got rid of her last night. What, what about her, though? <laughs> she's brilliant. Yes. Um, what, what do you like about her most? I like the fact that she's not afraid to just be herself and she doesn't really care what people think. Right, and it, that's not, that sounded like a passive-aggressive kind of... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> she you, doesn't care what people think. <laughs> but you are a bit passive-aggressive anyway. Uh, very. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, no, of course I'm, you're not. Passive-aggressive and extremely petty. OK, now, uh, you always look great now. You always look great. And I know you I know you don't particularly like talking about this, but you used to be twice the size you are, and now you're no longer that. Are you always hungry? Am I always hungry? No, yeah. not at all. So have you, have you mastered it? Have you conquered it then? Uh, yeah, but I've started eating bread again this week. And it's oh! Oh, it's, right. it's so delicious, isn't it? So Fat Ricky could be making a comeback. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, now, now that we're back on track. You get that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I can think I can put the weight back Also, on. it's a great story, though, isn't it? The up and down yo yo of down, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor for a career. <laughs> or, a, or a forthcoming <laughs> Christmas DVD. Yes, <laughs> of course. Oh, I didn't even think about that. When Work are you on tour next? Are you all signed up for the festivals and I things? I predict a diet. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, yes! Oh, <laughs> the line of the morning! <laughs> See, listeners, um, it was worth the wait. Don't, th don't, don't think I didn't hear that a lot when I was a bit fat. All oh, right, I saw. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Chris, oh, yeah, I've, um, festivals, yeah, loads of them. I don't know what yet. All it's all been out. moved around. I, 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 they never tell us until the day, really. Okay, listen to that. You listen to your year in a flash. So, James, your year in a flash to come. Come on. What am I doing this year? Yes, go on. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I start a job in uh, the end of March in London, and then I'm... I'm going to go to Turkey with my daughters. That was, it, that, was, that was so undescriptive. Yeah. I start a I job. No, well, I, I don't know if... I mean, it's one of those things I'm not sure if I'm oh, allowed to say it, as if the whole world is with, waiting with bated breath to see I what like I'm that. doing next, I, I like think that. not. But I'm doing a job, yes, about... Um, uh, is it a play? Is it a film? It's a it's a ten part drama. There you go. So that's it's TV thing. Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, okay, yeah. good for you. You're always working. He's oh, always well. working. He's always in demand. Right, your year in a flash to come, Rafe Spore. I'm going to do a film called The Big Short, based on a book about the financial crisis in America with lots of famous people. Um, and then I'm going to do uh, an adaptation of a children's book called Swallows and Amazons. Nice. Oh, oh, look at that. There you go. Never and, then, it. and then I'm going to do... Um, uh, I did a pilot for a TV show about music, actually, by, um, oh. written and directed by Cameron Crowe who made Almost Famous, um, and uh, Jerry Maguire and stuff. And so waiting, we're waiting to, to hear if that gets picked up. If that gets picked up, then we'll go to Los Angeles and do that for a long, a long time. It's not called TFI Thursday or something, is it? <laughs> no, no, it's not called TFI Thank Thursday. Thank you. All right, Caroline, uh, 2015 in a flash, please. Um, I've got a new job, which starts in May. She's got a new job! I've got a new job! Oh. And it's so good, and I'm really excited about it, but I can't say what it is yet. Oh, can you both stop it, this? I've got a new job, I can't say anything allowed. about it. Also, you... You know, Do you, mean you, you're you not might allowed? say it and then you haven't signed the contract and then they go, oh, we choose someone else. That happens a lot. Oh, so you haven't signed? Mm. I haven't signed, but I have signed. OK, all right. Well, so that's about it. Then. Really <laughs> so in, really ha in, housing in housing terms, they've accepted your offer and you're due to exchange any moment now. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Ricky, can you play us another song, please? I reckon. I what think you, so. What do you have for us now? Uh, coming Home by the okay. Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> Love this. Coming <laughs> Home, oh, Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> Beautiful! Excellent work! Kaiser 
Jeez, I love that song. Can I, song. can I just apologise for the rest of the band for doing a double chorus in the middle where we, we planned on a single did you chorus? Double chorus, it, did you? That's why I was going to keep going. Oh. Naughty boy, giving a bit of Van Morrison in the middle. Come on. You're going, oh, you're fired. Over there. <laughs> now, I've got to tell you, um, we were talking to VJ, your brand new drummer, well, newish drummer, and um, I've just been given a piece of paper saying that he was due, VJ was due to give his first ever interview um, to Nihal on the BBC Asian Network this morning between 11 and 12, but now that'll be his second interview, uh, won't it? Oh, so, did you know he was yeah. booked for an interview? So he's all primed for it now. Yeah, he's got his own thing going on with the Asian Network, which is great. OK, so Kaiser Chiefs, <laughs> uh, new single, Fortnite Your favourite colour is blue. Out now. Uh, Rick Spall, <laughs> new film, X Plus Y, is out in cinemas today. Caroline Flack is helping Derma out and telling us little bits and bobs about uh, what she's up to this year. James Nesbitt is here. He's hosting the Empire Awards. 2015 on Sunday the 29th of March. Now, Lynn, you had a question for Caroline. Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, yes. Ooh. When are you going to go into a West End show? That's what I want to know. Oh. I don't know. Because oh. I think you'd be good. We think you'd be amazing. Is that the yeah. job? Is that the job? That. That's the yeah. job, isn't it? Who knows? Uh, no, it's, it's a TV thing. But I'd love to do something like that. That's the great thing about Strictly. It opens a whole new world and path. But, yeah, I've always wanted to do something like that, so maybe. I was going to say that, because you are, you know, you are in the rain. It Strictly starts again August, September, whenever it starts. Uh, but you are the current the current reigning champion. Yes. And I think, you know, it, you know, who am I to say what they should do uh, with their programme? But they should make more of whoever is the mm. champion and get them on, you know, tour you around on a flat bed <laughs> <flat bad, laughs> truck. Around just on my own. Yeah, with a sash. <laughs> yes, just, <laughs> you know, helping things in the world. You know, like yeah. Miss yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you They've just you... forgotten about me already. They yeah, cast him for the new series. And the, the, the first, the first uh, few moments of the new series should always be the incumbent yeah, welcoming you back. That's very maybe, true. maybe the first dance should be I always think we are. be. I think that's what we're doing. All right, okay. Well, oh. yeah. <laughs> 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 Moving on. All uh, right. Uh, so, uh, questions from our guests to our guests after the news. More from Kaiser Chiefs. You're working on a dancing medley for Dermot. Well, tell us about this, Ricky. Uh, we don't really like doing covers. It stresses us out too much because <laughs> we have to learn someone else. Anyway. But, yeah, we're doing uh, three in one, three, three, three covers in one go. All right, to come All in the under two and a half minutes. End of the programme, brilliant. OK, so we got a trail, we got some travel, and then we'll have the news. Happy Friday, chums. Such fun. Summertime boy, if you haven't seen the video for that, please do try and catch it. C6 Steve, uh, he didn't achieve notoriety, success, um, musically that is, in his life until he was 65 years old. He's now 74, I think. He might actually be 75 this year. And he's just written the best album of his life. He's one of the best live performers you'll ever see anywhere in the world. Uh, he gives it plenty and he is surfing in that video and it really is him surfing and he really can uh, surf. 12 minutes past nine. Our guest this morning on Friday morning, James Nesbitt. It's here, host of the Empire Awards, the Movie Awards, uh, 2015, on Sunday, the 29th of March, when everybody who's anybody uh, turns up, lets the hair down. It's not televised, uh, so they really go for it. And it's all voted for by the fans, so get involved in that. You can do online now. Uh, Caroline Flax here. Caroline's been helping Dermot out, the current reigning queen of Strictly Come Dancing, helping Dermot out with this Dermot uh, Day of Dance happening right now. He's now been dancing for, what is it, 14 hours, uh, 12 minutes and 44 seconds. Uh, text the word Dermot to 7005 if you want to give him a five. That's plus uh, costs. Uh, or call 03457 to get involved with Comet Relief, which of course is uh, live on BBC One at 7 o'clock tonight. Also with us, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, their brand new single, Falling Wake, will be uh, their next track that they're going to play for us. Not live, by the way, though. As live, they recorded it this morning before the show started because they're currently off somewhere very special and we'll hear from them live again before the end of the show. And also joining us this morning, Rafe Spall, uh, one of our finest young actors. His new film, X Plus Y, is out in cinemas today. And now questions from our guests to our guests. Uh, Rafe, who would you like to ask a question to? Caroline Flack. Woohoo! Caroline. Yeah. What would your death row meal be? Oh, Ooh. Is that going to be your question? What? what? I was going to ask him, him a very similar question. Oh, good, good, good. Well, OK, well, now let's go back to the subject of this question first whilst Jimmy panics in the corner over there. Everybody's <laughs> asking question. Um, it has to be something with gravy. I, I'm a massive fan of gravy. Okay. No, I love it. I'd drink it on its own. 
Um, so I think it would be bangs and mash and loads of gravy. That's a good answer. Thanks. 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 What about, what about pudding? Sorry, can I ask pudding quickly? <laughs> um, it would be um, sticky toffee pudding. It would be... St- Oh, oh, mint chocolate ice cream. That's a heavy meal. That's a heavy <laughs> so meal. Wicked. Might as well go out with a bang, I guess. I've never <laughs> that question before. Thanks. Now, when That's you're right. doing Strictly, yeah. uh, can you eat what you want because you work so much of it off or do you have to oh, watch yeah. it yourself? No, I ate more. Double Did you? Dip. Yeah. No so, problem at all. Literally anything you want. I, I'm a massive foodie anyway, so I, I don't really do diets and things like that. Okay. Um, so it was great because well, I could just you eat. You obviously struggled with your weight. Well, no, I was... I was, I was, I was much bigger when I started Strictly, so it's really got me into exercise now because I do just like to. If I if I like something, I'll eat it. I won't I won't watch what I eat. Now, Rafe, uh, reading about you, mm. I heard you were once up to 120 kilos. I couldn't believe it when I, I read that last night. So I'm 32. When I was 21, I was five and a half stone heavier than I am now. That's unbelievable. Yeah, because because uh, uh, you know I've seen you in your movies and seen you doing your stuff, and I think I always thought there's a handsome, um, skinny mm. young Brit, but oh, it wasn't thanks. always the case. No, it wasn't always the case. No, I was a, uh, for a period of time a young. Uh, fat actor <laughs> and um, uh, the, the point to lose the weight came where when you get sent a script you always flip forward to your character description correct me if I'm wrong Jimmy so yeah. you see like enter blah 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 and I got sent a script and I got told to look at the character of Bosey and it said enter Bosey an incredibly fat man <laughs> and I thought well it's time to it's time to maybe fix this problem um, and I've yeah it worked out uh, do you watch, Do you have to watch your weight yeah and how do, how do you fe- do that? I'm sort of I come from the sort of Ricky Hatton school of <laughs> Feast and famine, you know. As I'll, and when I'll abstain for a three months period, and then I'll just get bang on the food again. I can't. I, I need to find a happy medium because it's just not healthy. <laughs> now, Jimmy, you've always been like a whippet, and um, mm. people say to me, "Oh, it's all right for you. You're naturally thin." I, I reckon you, you're you you have always looked after yourself, but I think you probably work at it, don't you? No, uh, no, I do actually. I worked because uh, uh, my I'm one of those actors that uh, I do look as if I'm three stone heavier on camera. Um, uh, which is so annoying. Uh, but uh, no, I've actually recently I've, I'm off dairy and wheat because mm. apparently I'm intolerant to the two, which they found out at fifty. Um, Are you fifty? Hi, I was fifty this year. Well done! Yeah. Oh, horrendous! How was that? Heart. It was. I took my daughters Peggy and Mary to Honest Burger in. Brixton, and that's that was what we to, did. That's the way no, to no, do it. None no, of this, no, 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 this no, I'm no, having no. a party for all my friends who don't really like me, yeah, and exactly. I'm 50. No, that's Welcome. what we did. Well, you don't look it, pal. Thank you. All right, Caroline, question please to whom? To Jimmy. Jimmy, do you remember... Oh, no. ..what we were doing last time I saw you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Please say no, and then, Caroline, you tell us. <laughs> oh, not, not entirely. A little bit? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> Can you say it on the radio, first yeah. of all? all no, right. yeah, it's fine. Don't worry. Go on. Um, we were singing Mac the Knife Ooh. at the piano in the Groucho. Oh, right. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. No, no, very, very look well. at the sense of relief. <laughs> Let's just watch them. Wow. James says he's going, oh, thank heaven for that. <laughs> right. Uh, James, your question, please. Well, I, I was going to ask what you would cook for me if it was our first date. Who to? Okay. To, Ra- uh, uh, to Rafe. OK, so if you were going out together... If we were going out on our first date, it was our first date and it was the, nice. this, was, this was the big night. That's a nice uh, question. And uh, what would you cook for me? I'd start off with a simple tricolore salad. Loving that. Right, yeah. that's what I'd go for, and I'd serve yeah. it on a board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nice. how food looks nice. Yeah. For the main course, I'd keep up the Italian theme. Yeah. Now, this might sound boring, but I'm going to quantify it with something jazzy. I'd make you a bolognese, but oh, in nice. that bolognese, I'd put your normal beef mince, and I'd yeah. also put some chicken liver in it. Yeah. And that sounds horrible. No, nice. Because I'm not a big innards fan, but you yeah. can't really taste the liver. You yeah. soak the liver in milk. Yeah, milk, of course. Yeah, yeah, and whole milk, and then you pour all the milk into the bolognese, a whole bottle of wine, and you cook it for four hours. Exactly. And it's knockout. That's proper ragu, Marcella Hazan. And uh, then we'd have... Um, uh, some ice cream, like vanilla ice cream. Something simple. Something simple. I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't even know if we'd get to the ice cream <laughs> after that. And many happy years together, I would imagine. They were yeah. the best three questions we've ever had from guests to guests. <laughs> All right, so Kai's Chiefs aren't here live. They were, and they will be again. But this is these guys who came here at quarter past five this morning because we had to record a track so they could get downstairs to set up again with Dermot. So this is the Kai's Chiefs live in the studio at quarter past five this morning. <laughs> With their new single. You're listening to Chris Evans' Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. In the playoffs in America for the NFL, they do do that spontaneous thing where all the games are ready to go on the Saturday and the Sunday and all the crowd's there and the uh, broadcaster tells them when uh, they're playing on the day. That's good fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Why not, you know? Why the heck not? In this first half flexible world we live in nowadays. Mm. Uh, Right, so Kaiser Chiefs. 
Pauline Waite live this morning. Well done, the cast. Just a little round of applause. Yeah, a live round of applause for our recorded track. And here now with us, Reverend Richard Coles, Good host morning. of Saturday Live. Uh, we share something today, don't we, Richard? We share a great deal, Chris, the zeitgeist. We also share Rafe Spall, who is giving his inheritance tracks on Saturday Live tomorrow. But the real question for me is, James Nesbitt, do you remember what we were doing the last time we met? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new series, isn't it? Oh, dear. Goodness uh, me. Not completely. What was that? <laughs> Let's just leave it there, Jim. Oh, <laughs> 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 now, uh, pray silence for a pause for thought Thank from very the much. Reverend Richard. It was, of course, the Feast of St. Sophronius on Wednesday. Bishop of Jerusalem when it fell to the Muslim armies of Caliph Umar in 637 AD. How would the Christian community in the city where Jesus died and rose from the dead survive under Muslim rule? I thought of this on Tuesday when I went to talk to the interfaith group at the Lewisham Islamic Centre in South East London. The group began after 9-11 when representatives of three faiths decided to get together in an act of resistance to the encroaching border of fear and dislike and intolerance that followed that ghastly episode. It's flourished and there's now an interfaith cricket match rather evenly poised thanks to Christian missionary activity in the West Indies and the Muslim equivalent in Pakistan, the caterings kosher. If you just read the headlines, you might think that encounters between Jews and Christians and Muslims are either, sh are either shouty confrontations of irreconcilable zealots or a liberal fantasy of everyone playing nicely, but you would be quite wrong. What I found on Tuesday was a deeper, richer story of coexistence and cooperation, not one that elides our differences but reaches, b reaches beyond them thanks to simple shared beliefs about how we might live, the kinds of beliefs that underlie comic relief and live aid and volunteering at the day Centre. The only threat I experienced on Tuesday evening was from a biscuit forced upon me, imperilling my Lenten fast. I didn't quite have the nerve to ask the imam and rabbi to lend me their hats so I could do something funny for money today, but there you go. The story of cooperation is nothing new. The Christian faith did not die in Jerusalem in the 7th century. When the city fell, Sophronius duly handed over the keys of his church to Umar, who with thoughtful and astute generosity gave them to one of his followers and charged him to open the doors in the morning and lock them up at night so Christians could continue to worship. The descendants of that 7th century Muslim still do the same today, morning and evening, pushing back the border of fear and dislike and intolerance. You're listening to the Chris Evans Breakfast Show on BBC Radio 2. Are you right? More in 25 minutes. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thanks to our guests this morning. First of all, Caroline Flack, what's she been up to? Caroline is helping Dermot out with his dance-a-thon, Dermot's Day of Dance. It's happening right now. Support him by texting the word Dermot to 7005 and donating £5 to Comic Relief. All right, thanks to Rave Spore for being here. What's he up to, Caroline? Well, Rave has a new film, X and Y, which is out in cinemas today. OK, and what about Jimmy Nesbitt, Rafe? Jimmy Nesbitt is hosting the Empire Awards 2015 on Sunday, the 29th of March. Thanks all for coming in, guys. Thank you. Uh, Lightest round of applause, as always, for the guys who've worked hardest. Kaiser Chiefs! <laughs> who are now downstairs with Dermot O'Leary outside. Dermot's going to dance some live music, a dance medley from the Kaiser Chiefs. Ricky, what do you have for us? We have a dance medley from the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> OK, off you go. All right, let's play it. Guys, ready, BJ? Ready. Famous BJ. <laughs> Go for it. That's our new broadcasting house, and I can now tell Dermot and the whole world that so far his dancathon has raised £102,228. Well done, Dermot. Excellent. Donate more. Takes the word Dermot to. 7005, and Ken will now take over and enthuse a little bit more. Yes, I'm tapping my feet, and that's as much as I'm going to do today. On digital and on 88 to 91 FM, BBC Radio 2. 